They asked me here to tell the story of the drummer at Lancer's Gap. It's a story I know well. I was there. You've heard of the drummer. Mostly heard wrong, I'll wager. He wasn't tall. He was brown, not gray like us in mine country. No, he, he looked like one of our people, breathed full of sunshine. And there was sun in his eyes, too. There was something magical about him, for sure. The first time I saw him, he was surrounded by people. Children in the front, as if their innocent gathering had given permission for their elders to come and gawk. He had them wrapped. He had their attention. He could have preached anything to them that day. He could have sold them anything. Or he could have played for them. But he just smiled. That big smile he had. For a long time, and people trickled away off to their own pursuits until it was just me and him on that dusty road. He looked me over, had the measure of my profession, said, Street sweeper, hello. I laughed. I'd taken you for a mute. He goes, Dom maybe, not mute. I'm a musician. I told him that musicians usually go up the road toward the palace or at least the bazaar, that our people have no ear for music, and he smiled even wider. I told him, I've got a floor you can sleep on if you can sweep. He nodded, shook my hand, told me his name, which I couldn't pronounce then or now. He swept at my side for a long time. We talked of brooms and old loves and all the places he'd seen and traveled. He said that you can stand on the wet stones beneath the falls of Ithardum with the white mist settling around you and the thunder of the water coming up through the stones rattling your bones. Oh, I do believe I'd like to see that someday. Of course, I ask about his music. He pointed to my heart, locked eyes like talons, and pointed to his own heart. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> and we laughed until I almost cried. And when we got straight, he slapped me on the back and said, that is music, my friend. There is no higher song. And of course, from that, I took it to mean he was not a very good musician, and I didn't ask him again. <laughs> and the whole time, we swept streets together. It had to have been a season. Oh, we, that's right, because it was winter when the Icemen came. Just like in those stories, they come with the snows. Have you seen an Iceman? Oh, of course you haven't, because you're here alive with both your eyes and ears intact. No, they sail from the north. Gods only know where. They are men with minds and hearts and children and songs of their own, but that can be said of wolves. They are not men like us. No, not like us at all. And when their white ships were seen at the fishing village of Creighton's Way, a wail went up in the night so loud that it was heard the next village over. And their wails heard the village over from that. And before the night was out, all our land knew that death had come to our solemn shore. The king sent out an order that every able man with a pointy object should try to meet at Lancer's Gap. Why Lancer's Gap? Well, you've seen the place. It's huge. It was a, a dry riverbed, and the river that used to feed it flows all the way, or flowed all the way, to the ocean right there at Creighton's Way. The king, I'm sure, knew that the Icemen would come up that river as merchants have for a hundred years. The drummer left me that night. I didn't blame him. I should have, too. So I was without a friend at dawn when I broke my broom to make a sort of spear and set off toward whatever ends I knew not. There were men ahead of me and men behind us, just a trickle of us, but I knew there would be trickles from all over and that if we could only get there in time that we would have a force I reached Lancer's Gap after nightfall, and already I could see Icemen fires upon the ridge. My people were below, hidden in the darkness. I have no idea how many. The dawn revealed us, and we were a number. Like a, a carpet of black ants, if you can believe it. But the Icemen on their ridge 
shining in the morning sun looked like a glacier ready to come down on us. And looking out at our mass of hearts and theirs together, I could not imagine that any general would think upon their meeting and call it a victory. I could not imagine anything but 10,000 families tied up in that battle with no possible result but rivers of blood. And it was then I saw the drummer perched on a rock promontory on our side of the field, but not by much. I saw him unfold his leather satchel and draw out that great instrument. And believe it or not, I swear to you, it was burnished gold. And because I was already looking, I was the one head in 10,000 that did not turn up when he played the note. You remember it in your head just like that, D-O-O-M, because that is the sound he made. People stood, weapons stirred, we prepared to march, and though the commanders at our backs waved their flags, it was the drum we followed. Doom, 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 doom. We moved as a mass, one people, one step before the other, one mind, one purpose. And then it stopped. And we stopped. And here's the damnedest part. The part the bards can never get right because they weren't looking at the drummer. He was laughing, laughing and capering about. And you can't even imagine the clear, bold, bright, rhythm, the craziness that flowed out of his drum, a rhythm no drunken beetle could have marched to. I laughed. I thought he was mocking the ice men right to their iron faces, but I could see them jiggling in their armor that they were laughing too. The music stopped. I heard commanders again, the sharp crack of command flags waving behind us. The beat started again. Doom, 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 doom. But with the laughter hardly perished from my throat, new words took form and bound unbidden to my lips. One heart. And not just mine, I saw around me others shaping those very words. And though the generals at our backs called for us, form up, march forward, it was the Iceman's flags we watched, and they were still. Still! Can you believe it? There was something in that song, a song of life. That's what it was. Whether they feared it or honored it, I do not know. But soon the voices of our side rose up as one. One heart! One heart! You know the rest. They turned. The Icemen turned. I don't care why, but they left. They have not come again. I hope, I dream that somewhere some Icemen's map has circled our land with words one heart above it, perhaps the very words writ above his home. And the drummer is on to some more necessary place to sing the one song that he knows, the song within us all. <laughs> 